All right, like I said, uh, just a couple of minutes and we're back. And now I want to ask for the next strategy here for Lava, guys. Uh, they come from a relatively rough game one. Obviously, I'm assuming the tidy might not be as prioritized, but what, what's your plan for game number two? Is this the moment to bring the... What would be the easiest draft uh, to be, be able to work out here, would you say? Uh, Lala, let's, let's start with you. I, mean, I would like them to just uh, avoid this tiny hero until like a second phase. I think it's baiting them more than it's actually helping them. Because they think it's a flex, but at the same time, they're like, oh, well, now we have tiny four. It's kind of kind of shit. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I would just like them to avoid the hero for a while. At least like second phase, until, until they actually like see at least like two cores or something. Uh, I think a DP pick is fine, but maybe not put a core against A. I think that that was also just kind of kind of rough for DP. It's too hard to play. How, do do you think that they should like like what, how do you deal with this AA though? Because there's no way you, you ban that hero and pick the DP, or or is that something they should consider? I mean, you can just put the DP five, right? I think the DP would be great against Mars uh, Earth Spirit lane. I think sh they would crush yeah. this lane. So like a range hero against double melee, they can't really touch the the Spirit Siphon's gonna own. But, but they chose like the big Phoenix. F Phoenix was great; like it, he did great in the game. But uh, it just kind of screws over the other picks, right? Mm. Do you agree with that? Do you think that DP should be flexed here? Ignore the tiny uh, duster. Yeah, I even mentioned like uh, I expected them to put a DP five even like mm. when you ask me about what Moz Moz studies the other regions a lot, and that's normal to do. Like you flex his DP into the five position, she definitely destroys this strained. Offliners like Mars, it's it's really nice, and she doesn't care about the A. What what other ideas could they propose? Because uh, Lava sometimes uh, feels like they're they're behind in the draft. They feel like they're always answering their opponent. That's kind of how it felt when they were on their on their you know down down scale in TI. Uh, what can they do to make sure that they're not in that position? Is there any strong opener you think right now that'd be like, All right, just just go with this, easy uh, easier to execute, assuming they're on first pick perhaps. I think they need to try to grab this Mars, for sure. This is the okay. hero in South America, uh, and it's a good Frank hero, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, I still think you, you can keep insisting on the DP, but you got to flex it. Like That was not a DP core, for sure. Uh, if they're not willing to flex, then they should throw DP and Tiny away, for sure. Mm. And go to more of their roots, like uh, on their series against Infamous, for example, they did the Centaur Rubik opener, which is like a great lane, uh, good synergy, so it's already like a strong combination. You don't lose yourself in these flex. Mm. Uh, would you also feel like they had to show more priority onto Leo style as well? Because as you said here, like they just gave him DP, she was completely countered, and Leo is usually the pivotal point of Thunder Awaken. Or sorry, of Lava. My bad. Uh, as he he kind of like the team sinks or swims based on Leo's performance in general, and he's a very uh, trustworthy mid laner. But I think this game. As you guys, as you said, Duster, like Phoenix did more damage than him. How do you play DP into an ancient apparition? So, is is that something they could concentrate on? Could they give maybe like what's the way they can buff their mid laner here? Yeah, they need to try pick his uh, hero later in the draft. Try to make okay. him uh, more free. Maybe s wait until you see the matchup, for example, and pick something more comfort for him, like one of the spirits that he does well, mm. and then something that just gonna lane harder because they picked this dp mid which is like a lane dominant hero but when you put against venom it seems like she couldn't do well especially against the earth spirit just rotating and constantly pressuring him so they need to somehow make him more free and the only way i see is picking his zero later on the draft would uh, a stronger four instead of crap tiny be a better idea as well here something that can rotate mid uh, successfully that would always help for sure. Uh, <laughs> most like this uh, melee rotation heroes. Maybe they yeah. themselves could snatch their spirit, for example. It worked great and combine something with Leo. Uh, his yeah, Tusk but... was also pretty decent. Let's be honest, though, Duster. Uh, name of position four in Peru that does not like the tanky melee fours. <laughs> I think that's just the style of the country for some reason. Schofield is a king on them, right? I, I mean, famously, uh, Schofield said in an interview that he doesn't know how to play ranged heroes, obviously as a joke, uh, but <laughs> that this kind of stands true when you see the draft sometimes. In the case of, in the case of Beast Coast, do you think they should... Uh... Like this time, they're very adaptable in their drafts and everything. They usually don't come up with pocket strats. Of, you know, you, you've seen them. You've drafted with them. They kind of just do it on the fly. Uh, should they be worried in the second game about anything? Is can they just like draft normally, keep it chill, or do you think is the moment to like bring something special to the table and shock um, lava? 
Uh, I, don't, I don't think they need to do anything special. They did their Rudder Butter the first game, right? They flex up like some weird heroes, and then they get some last <laughs> pick for Hector, which he just 1v5s, right, after he farms a little right. bit. So I think if they can just do the same thing, they can have a like, Mars snap, right? I think the snap offlane wasn't that good for them, and they think he lost the game. Was it? I don't remember what it, who it was against. Hokori? Was it Hokori? Yeah, I think they, I lost, think they, yeah, lost, they lost that game, right? Yeah, so maybe not the snap, but uh, I mean, they did flex the Venom, right? So that mm. looked pretty good. What is your opinion in general on the snap offlane? Because we've been seeing other teams starting to adopt that as well. Uh, Balrogs did it as well. I mean, I, th I think it's playable. I think it can be strong. I think it's especially strong with Void. Uh, but you certainly need like heroes to go in for you. And the hero, as a core, later in the game, it kind of does the same thing as a support. So you might mm. just be caught in a draft where you just have like three supports on your team, right? And then you don't have enough cores to actually do stuff. So mm. unless you have so, like a carry matchup, you, you might not want the snap in the offlane. What's the advantage then of like putting a snap in the offlane versus the four then? Oh, I think the the lane is just stronger. I think when and also when snap is a core, like she gets items faster, like she gets this blank shard, which is pretty strong. Uh, mm -hmm. And you just scale faster. You get level two ult faster. You do more damage. And it's also just a stronger laner, I think. Okay. All right. Well, that's the uh, we're waiting waiting to the draft to begin. Let's uh, let's come into some of the other. Ideas that we've had here uh, for for I keep wanting to call him Thunder. I'm so sorry for Lava because they've been in the org for so long. And Thunder comes to mind for Lava. Uh, Wu was always known for also playing some very orthodox stuff. I think I think he was the king of pocket picks before it became a thing in the region. You know, he was the the encyclopedia daughter. You think of strats beforehand. Is there anything Duster since you've watched him for a while that you've liked recently? They've tried out that you might want to see them try in this game. Not necessarily a pocket try that's crazy. You talked about Rubik Center, right? Any other ideas you've seen them in drafts that you, you would like to see again? From uh, from Lava, I don't know the draft that I would like to see. Mm, I really like their Lash. Like, oh, that's uh, a good is point. A, is, a, is, is a hero Lil style can like dominate the game with a good lane. Yeah. You know, good four to help him. He can definitely this dominate the game. I really like their Lash. Uh, their Mars, of course, just the best hero in this region. And... I would like to see something like a center again for their opener, like something okay. solid, you know? Well, they have the chance because this time uh, Beast Coast wants to get his first pick, but they banned the Mars, so <laughs> they heat your council. And uh, Lava will get second pick once again. Let's see if they try out that strong lane that you were suggesting, Duster. I'd love to see that, actually. I think Moses Rubik is also incredible. I'm a big fan of Why the, the Beastmaster band, though, Lulus? Is that. Oh, well. Well, that's the Ruby God as well. <laughs> Are these just uh, respect bands here uh, from Beast Coast? Or is it just full respect band for Lava? Uh, you, you, I'm sure yeah. you've seen Frank play Beastmaster. Is he that good at the Beastmaster? You want to ban it first phase? I mean, I think Beastmaster is his best hero. Like, uh, I think. Really? Yeah, when Lava was Thunder, I think Beastmaster was her strongest strat. When Beastmaster is mega broken with Necro, uh, they're just mm -hmm. first pick every game. And it was just the style they were, they were playing. Like, they. They're a snowball-y team, they kind of want to be ahead. This Lava team, they don't really enjoy playing from behind, usually. Mm -hmm. So they pick a lot of these like push heroes, DP, Beastmaster. They always have these sort of heroes. And I, th I think it's mm -hmm. just his best hero, Beastmaster. Do you think they could try other sets that are similar? Or is Beastmaster like stands above the rest? Like it, it would MP like and stuff like that be, be okay for Lava to try out? Or, or you don't think they do as much right now? I feel like Lycan is a little bit nerfed. Like, ever since mm -hmm. TI, the heroes got continuously nerfed, and people actually know what to do against it nowadays. Radiant. Like, people yeah. Terra Blade and other carry matchups. Uh, I also think Nature's Prophet's a pretty interesting hero. Uh, they reworked their level 20 talents, and those talents are pretty good now. Like, the Leash yeah. and the Miss, and it goes for BKB. But the hero's laning just has been a little bit nerfed. So, I'm not, he also really likes Prophet. Like, it's one of his best heroes, right? The unit heroes that push. Five they they can pick it. It is good against SD, but people just haven't been picking it that much. Radiant team. Do you know why? What would be your theory? Oh. I'm not entirely sure. I feel like uh, <laughs> a lot of it's just maybe it doesn't do that well against like ti this tiny hero and a lot of the carry the carries that are in the meta. They just kind of free farm against Furon. Oh, uh, fair enough. Yeah. Remaining. Uh, talking about the uh, the lava side now, Duster, they do pick a Leo style hero. He's gonna go for the Queen of Pain, uh, not the ones we mentioned, but certainly one of Leo style's favorites for sure up there with the puck. He's a very classic mid laner in that sense. But is this first phase pick a bit dangerous for Lava? 
can it happen like last time with BP? Yeah, I don't like it. Like the cop <laughs> itself as a hero, it's it's not seems so strong recently. Like the hero has been losing a lot, and mm -hmm. I would prefer mm -hmm. he goes for something more solid like the lash. Like they were picking lash so much, I don't know they stopped. And yeah, the scope just feels a bit underwhelming recently. Is she less counterable? Is that why maybe they try it in the first phase as opposed to the lash? Not entirely yeah, sure. I think laning is fine. I think okay. any lane she plays, she'll do well. Either maxing the dagger or maxing the scream, she'll get the farm for sure. I think later on the hero is just not scaling as much as he used to. He definitely got mm. a bit weaker. Lulus, by the way, they do go for a bit of a push shot already. Moose, another hero that he does love to play is the Shadow Shaman. Uh, he used to play that a lot when he was in Business Associates. What yeah. do you think the hero stands right now? Shaman is just a weird hero. I think his laning is just a little bit weird. Sometimes he just chain feeds in lane. Even though he has such high base damage, his range is way too low. And his spells are like, he has this channeling spell. So he can just be very susceptible to just getting gone on. Mm -hmm. Uh... I also, I find this quad pick very, very weird and very desperate. Okay. I feel like they, so? they want to win the mid lane, mm -hmm. and then they pick this hero that also, also has mobility against Shadow Demon, right? It makes sense. Mm -hmm. But then, now you're playing against Lina. And Lina's one of the <laughs> few heroes that win against Quap. So now, like, you're... Well, this is a little bit sad, right? You don't want to really pop this, put this Shaman 5 and this Quap 4. It's just... I feel like they started on a, a in a bad spot already in the draft. Okay, so not what you were expecting. No, 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 like strong lane, easy draft. Certainly a bit more desperate than what you were thinking. Could it be a quap three? Is that that possible? I, it is possible. But I don't think Frank will play it. <laughs> okay. I haven't ever seen him play it. Me neither. Me neither. I'm just you know I'm, I'm spitballing here because I I don't want to. <laughs> if Lava yeah. loses another draft like this, it feels a bit bad. Uh, for for Lina Pickham for Beast Ghost, <clears throat> it also is a bit dangerous to play against them with Lina because one of the few heroes, much like the Slark mid, that opens up their strategy a lot, and they start they don't play as much for Protect One with a Lina mid, um, <clears throat> so it's even harder to like nullify Ekt or win the game. Yeah, I mean Lina is a really good hero for Beast Ghost, I think. But yeah, Chris Luck, he's also like a Mega Ricer, so this hero can also just carry, be a semi carry. He's a Mega one what, sorry? He's a mega ricer. He, he farms a lot. Oh, okay. Okay. He farms almost as much as, as Hector. Like he's okay, usually okay. almost top network almost every game, right? <laughs> that's true. That's true. Yeah, he plays like TA a lot, and he 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 enjoys playing these semi carries or carry mm -hmm. heroes. So Lina is one of the better ones. So she can scale really hard and just carry the game. Uh, aren't you impressed sometimes when you watch Chris and he's playing these semi carry heroes when he's like creating space at the same time as he's farming ridiculous amount and you watch his deaths, you're like, he has six deaths and somehow still second net worth? I, I always never understand where he finds the farm, to be honest. Yeah, I think it's like his best quality is that he makes space and a lot of times he dodges a lot of the ganks and he doesn't die. He's a very <laughs> smart player. It might not look like it, but his farming patterns are really good. <laughs> Yeah, it is, uh, it is. Yeah, like he, he doesn't have like these silly deaths. I mean, sometimes he feeds when they have a really greedy lineup, like Whisper is also farming, then sure, someone has to feed, you know. You can't sure, have three cores farming the map. But he, he is a very smart player, like he knows how to rotate. He He's a very good spellcaster and a very good like a uh, farmer. Ten seconds mm -hmm. remaining. You know, I was always impressed by, uh, recently I, I saw this, I, uh, Astini was sharing some heat maps of Beast Coast with me, right? And he watched Beast Coast uh, for Hector, and obviously his heat map is just the same area, and it's all red, because he likes, he has the same kind of uh, pathway in most games. And for uh, for Chris Luck, what's interesting is, obviously besides the laning stage, uh, he is just kind of yellow all over the place. He is really adaptable to the games, which is kind of what you're talking about, the, the idea that he always just finds farm in weird places, he has a good sense of the game. I'm very impressed by someone that can do that. Like, having no set plan, and just adapting to the game every time, that's that's wild. I don't think that's valued enough in him as a mid laner. I mean, for sure. People praise Whisper a lot on this team, which he is a very yeah. good player, but I think Chris Luck also Ten is very good. Remaining. If uh, Chris Luck wasn't as versatile as he is, and he didn't know how to do these Five things on different types remaining. of heroes, I don't think this mm -hmm. team would be as functional. A example, like the Disruptor mid thing again, against the Enigma, team. right, on land. That came <laughs> from him. He was like, just give me Disruptor. Right. And then it fixed our draft, right? Yeah, that's so, wild. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's apparently he does that for most drafts. He says, "I can play this hero, right? Uh, no yeah, matter yeah. what the the hero is." It's something very valuable. It's very hard to like make a player be like this. It's kind of just comes from him. So, right. 
Yeah. No, that's again insider information. Guys don't know us. Did play with Beast Coast as a stand in for a while during that major, particularly. So, uh, really, really cool to see that. As Lava, they're gonna pick up the clockwork. Also, a Moose Hero, but Duster, there's probably gonna be for Wu, right? Yeah, that's an interesting pick. And Ilina? In theory, yes, but the clock 5 is just so underwhelming, like when you don't have a lot of XP or when you get these eggs. I think his eggs mm. is broken because you can chain stun so well. But as right. a position 5, you're not gonna get it. Like At best, you're gonna be spamming rocket flares and hoping to find Lina on these team fights. but it's just... very. I, I think there's a lot better options, in my opinion, than this clock. So, so, so would you say that, the, you know, we always say that a clockwork could counter to Lina, blah, blah. You think it's not really the case when the clockwork is 5 because he just falls off a little bit too early? It's harder. It's hard to find Lina when you're playing as a yeah. five. I feel, and also the Lina is gonna have like Shadow Blade, uh, BKB. Mm -hmm. He could even opt for a Hurricane Pike scheme. And once he gets yeah. his items, you're not gonna have eggs to keep up with his mobility. Now Beast Coast go for the Morana. We joked that uh, Schofield does not play range heroes. He does play some Morana, being one of them. Though, knowing this team, it could also be Lina for Morana mid. I you know, Ten seconds remaining. why would they? But it, it is Beast Coast, so we just have to mention it. Five seconds remaining. Is the Morana here the combo for the Shadow Demon? Do you think they're going to pick up something strong on the offlane to combine with it? SK still in the pool, for example? Yeah, they, yeah, they need a, a melee hero, for sure, to tank damage, mm -hmm. at least. Like, uh, Mars banned, Centaur banned, Beast banned. Sanking still in. They're going to get anti mage though, but oh, I right. think it's fine. Like, anti is looking to lane with Clock, so it's not even that bad. I think they can just pick Sand King, and he'll he'll do fine. Is that a winnable lane, as, uh, because of the Clockwork? Yeah, Clock 5 is just really weak, honestly. Like, I, li I like the Clock pick against Lina, but as Duster said, he's going to be underleveled, and it's not going to even feel that good. Like, he's going to hook the Lina, and he might just instantly die. He's just going to use all his spells on him, he's going to die. Right. There we'll is see Sand King. Does take the bait and go for the anti mage. Do you feel like uh, Beast Coast also has? They don't have last pick, but they could probably counter the anti mage if it gets picked now. And if not, ban it, right? Beast Coast's turn yeah, they can. Okay, dude, they'd rather go for Dusa, which is fine too. I think Lava's gonna ban the anti mage now, probably. One of Hector's favorite heroes against Medusa, probably. Yeah. They have Shaman, but it's like the only stun they have. What do you think uh, of the PL pick here, by the way? I wanna, uh, do you think that's a, a good pick against the Dusa? It, it's, it's good. Uh, the, Dusa can not care about PL too. Like, she can yeah. scale really well against PL. You just buy mm -hmm. Butterfly, Mjolnir, and get 25. Sure, it's when she gets 25, but she farms pretty fast, and you don't have to worry about not scaling against PL. I don't think this game is as free as last game. Last right. game was mega free. Uh... <laughs> And they're still gonna have counter pick, right? Because Lava has last pick. Yeah, I think Lava has last pick. Oh, they banned ban anyway. Yeah, it's oh. a respect ban. Yep. What other heroes would you would come to mind here, Duster? Obviously, we mentioned the anti mage as well for Hector. What other heroes would deal well with Dusa? Because usually Hector concentrates on that matchup more than anything. Uh, matchups against this Dusa. Mm. For pool. Oh no one. <laughs> EBB a pick. Very nice. What do you think? He has a or against the Shadow Shaman on lane, and I guess a reflection is really good against Dus also. They can. I think. I think it's good. I think Lava should just pick Darkseer. I think it's a free win if they if they pick TB. They have like Darkseer okay. clock. Just put this clock as a four in the off lane. He's gonna be mega buffed. He just solo kills Lena when he's six. They, they can't pick it. Naga. Yeah. So anti mage is still in the pool. It's kind of rough to pick anti mage when you don't see the lane. That's the thing. Yeah. Like they can just pick slaughter, and then you're gonna feel like, mm, kind of don't want to be anti mage anymore. Right. Especially when you have a, you're probably gonna have a shadow demon five, right? This hero's already weak in lane. Beast Coast is known for just ha drafting weak lanes and just not really caring. So they might just yeah. pick it anyways. Because they they lose the lanes and they win forty minutes in after a comeback fight that's they pulled out of their you know rear end that's the beast coast way at least in DPC. Yeah. We'll see what their final choice is going to be for beast coast and that's going to determine essentially how their draft turns out. 
It's going to be the Terror Blade that Duster All talked right. about. And now, if we follow this logic, uh, Lelis has got has got to be the Darkseer, right? I mean, it's such a good Darkseer game. He's going to buff Clock. <laughs> he's going to yep. take a dump on this TB in lane. This Clock is just going to gank mid with Shell. It's, it's so easy for him to play. But I, case, I'm not even sure if Frank plays it. A... Yeah, you, you lane the Clock with the Darkseer and just put the Shaman 5. I'm pretty sure he plays it, right? But Frank's hero pool is pretty... It's like diverse enough. He plays all the traditional offlaners, right? I'm sure I I've seen know. him play Darkseer. I don't know, actually. You... <laughs> well, that's not a good sign. Okay, four is very little. Probably Bisco snows. That's rough. Is that hero a difficult hero to play, by the way? Genuine question. Is it a hero that you can't run if you haven't done a lot of practice with him professionally? I wouldn't say it's a hard hero. Uh, especially when you have, like, a, a, I think Clock's the best partner for that hero. Especially when you right. have a, such, a, like, a good partner in the game. And you have, like, uh, you're the they're the counter, right? You're countering the TB. That, that I think yep. is, it's even easier. They go, Axe. Yep. they go for a Frank hero instead. What are your thoughts on this uh, offline pick instead? I mean, I am an axe hater. I think the hero is pretty <laughs> underwhelming. I, I sure. think like the axe game. combination. I, I I'm also just not a fan of axe and shadow demon. I think this matchup is just it can just go so bad. If, if you initiate in and the guy gets disrupted and you get ulted, you're just dead. It can just go really bad. Also, think TV doesn't really care that much about axe. Mm. But they might he might just prove me wrong again, right? Just like the last series, I just got the guy was just ten and zero, just destroyed the game. But that was also Papita playing out of his mind, or Mariano playing out of his mind that game. That was a fantastic performance by him. Uh, Frank, also a known Axe user. Uh, Duster, what side are you leaning on with this? Not the Axe debate. I think. Against this mm. Mirana Sand King initiation, like they have so much to, uh, disable, follow up damage. Uh, it's such a well structured draft, and yeah, Lava doesn't have any saves. Whatever gets initiated is gonna die. Even Dooza can get uh, burst at this game, depending on how her farm is. So I'll go with Beast Coast. Yeah, once again, the panel sides with Beast Coast, partially because of respect for them, partially because of hatred towards the axe. I think both reasons are equally as valid. We'll see what the game, how the game pans out, as uh, Lava needs to win this game. They want to force a game number three for this series. We're gonna go over to our casters, the wonderful Seek and Strike Dota and Lacoste. Thank you, Abo. Yeah, I mean, we had one game where the panel hated on the Axe, and it kind of ended up winning them the game. This Axe draft looking a little bit more difficult into the Shadow Demon Lacoste. Uh, what are your feelings here as we head into game number two, Beast Coast up 1-0? Yeah, it, it's a bit uh, difficult one, I would say. Uh, maybe he surprises us again how well he performs on the Axe, but uh, playing into Shadow Demon might be a bit tricky. Uh, Lelis talked about, you know, one Shadow Demon save into ulti, you're not moving. So I, I could see that happening unless they get a good jump on SD. They do have heroes to jump the Shadow Demon, Queen of Pain plus Clockwork. So he, he's going to be probably the main target. Like Lina also very uh, easily jumped hero, especially with the Clockwork on. Uh, I want to see the mid matchup, how this is going to go. One of the reasons why they picked Lina is... It just works well against Queen of Pain. You out out Ranger, but uh, I want to see how this is gonna go. Clockwork rotation could be crucial. Uh, Terrible against Medusa. Love the matchup for TB. I feel like Beast Coast they do have like overall better better carry to carry matchups in both of these games. And uh, Sanking plus Mirana. There's not too much to say about this lane. It's a it's a killer lane. We like we've seen it throughout other regions in the DPC tour. People just love to play it. It's very easy, very straightforward, and uh, you still have damage. Uh, you can play throughout the whole game, not just Sanking Mirana. You have Shadow Demon plus Mirana as well on top of that. Uh, Sanking plus Lina. These are some like old school Dota combos. Yeah, both of the uh, both supports from both teams rotating to the mid lane is going to be a little bit spicy for both, right? Uh, Shadow Demon is set up for an yeah. LSA against a Quap who normally can just blink, and of course Clockwork eventually at level six. Um, what I do really like, and, and of course, guys, we are paused, which is why uh, we're not showing the game yet. Because Casters, really start the, the game. game. 
Come because on, because we're Lacoste. talking. That's why we're not starting. It's it's in Lacoste Rider. We can't actually start the game until he gets to to talk yeah, about how much he loves like that. Contract. He's like, we're gonna go, so we can hop into the game. Now we can hop in. But I do really like at least that the axe is, is seemingly somewhat enabled right this game. You've got uh, another short range damage dealer to kind of assist him, a little bit of catch, and, and just more nuke in the lane to help him out. And of course, I think Rocket Flare is huge this game. You've, you've got two heroes that play really well into Vision, being the Queen of Pain and Axe, and someone to give them Vision with Rocket Flare. Uh, that might be something that Lava could look to exploit as long as, or as soon as they get the Splink Dagger, say, online from Axe. Uh, and before this TB is completely online, perhaps there is a window of victory where they could make things work. Yeah. Uh, jetpack. I I want to see if this is going to be something picked up uh, early on by Clockwork. Uh, mostly position 5 Clockworks do tend to pick it up. Uh, he already has like 4 staff plus Tranquils as a, <laughs> as a 5 Clockwork. Yeah, you need, uh, you need a couple of healing solves there, bro. Yeah, he's going to need a couple, a little Six. bit of memeing in the all chat. <laughs> and uh, eventually the good lucks will come out as we are finally in game and rushing towards the mid lane here. So we should get all caught up to the action. Caster, Lacoste, thank you. We can finally start the game. Everyone, please thank Lacoste. You're welcome. I had to clap. Seems like this was the thing that needed to yeah. be done. <laughs> not you, Avo. Do not thank Lacoste. As uh, we are getting underway for game number two. A little bit of warding wars. Uh, Beast Coast all set up here, all ready to go in the mid lane. Uh, this this Deuce Sanking lane, though, I don't expect to be super easy. I mean, it is going to be a Clockwork support versus Sand King uh, without Boots as well. Uh, but uh, is there any lane that needs to be like make or break, or is there any lane that one team needs to win for their game plan to, to kind of survive? Like this Clockwork plus Medusa lane, it, it can get them kills. This is what Clockwork 5 wants to do. Go in and trade kill, get Medusa some solo XP. Eventually he dies first. That, that's what he wants to do. Uh, refill the bottle on a mid lane, come back, uh, full HP, full yep. mana, do the same thing. There's the arrow. A battery assault, not gonna do much against the three illusions here. Caught you, still alive. Might just end up denying himself to Roshan, but with Kotaro and Frank actually looking to turn now, because Kim with the level one shackles now onto Stinger. It's decent damage slowed now by the Mystic Snake as Frank continues to run him down and they will give Kotaro first blood. Okay, is it second blood here for Gojira? It seems like it could be. Gojira with the Wind Lace versus the Marana. He's a greatly outspeeds her, so it seems like he's even going to live here as well. Ah, uh, there's no point in chasing. There's no way you kill him even with the arrow hit. Uh, maybe they could have gotten the kill if Terrorblade decided to go for meta. Maybe he felt like he needs meta for the lane instead of just grabbing the kill there. So that, that's fine. That's how K1, you know, thinks about the game. Very self-oriented. Does not want to ruin his game just for the first blood potentially. And if they don't get the kill, then he's stuck in the lane with nothing. So yeah, with this illusion, he's gonna cause a bit of an issue against the Shadow Shaman who struggles against any kind of AoE. And they also do have Shadow Demon with the illusions on top of that. So yep. very hard to deal with early on until Axe gets the counter helix, starting with the Battle Hunger, pretty standard stuff. Mid lane, let's see, Quap. Yeah, she's, she's not even getting a point in Shadow Strike in this matchup. Yeah, I even kind of, uh, so it seems like her obs is on a tough dead time. bottom. Ooh. That fixed. We need a radio cast. Gojira sneaking through the trees. Gonna make it away for now. Still no move speed, though, and Whisper going one and one here on the Sand King builds. Is doing well to keep Katyu at bay, just with the right clicks. Mid lane, nine and zero here. The Moran, or sorry, the Lena currently leading the Quap. Uh, so it's gonna be a nice deny here. Uh, but so far going just about even. You know, getting in a good amount of harass though with the LSA now up to level one. The sampler build with the kill, actually top lane. <laughs> Without the meta, Lacoste is still a very aggressive lane, and the all they need to do is a big problem. Is slow them with reflection and keep those illusions. Conjure image plus the disruption illusions. It's uh, it's enough, and they're also pushing out the wave. And now Stinger can go for the pull. He ate the tangos, eat his way through. The jungle, gonna get the pull off. 
right now. 12 and 3 is the place to be if you're a core. Leo Style and Kotaro both Michi, Mik, making that mark. Uh, the TB, although getting a kill here, is slightly behind the eight ball, but with his first meta usage now, he's taking it at level 3. Uh, is going to get a couple more creeps here. So far, the only hero that's kind of fallen behind in terms of farm is definitely Whisper. He's 4 and 1 uh, compared to the Axis 10 and 4. So he is starting to struggle in this lane quite a bit. Snake forcing another leap. Uh, forcing early leap charges is really good. He might force Shira. another one. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's true. Ooh. Rocket player is almost enough. Down to less than 10 HP is the Marana before the healing self gets forced out. So Kojira doing a good job getting a lot of the regen out from Katyu, but uh, there's a lot of regen wasted for him and what could be for the Sand King. Bottom lane being played up at Lava really well. They're pushing out the wave. Uh, also, the snake usage on Marana that the slaughter was really good. Mm -hmm. Nice bounce there on over to Whisper, who has a full bracer. Pretty tanky, sitting close to 900 HP at level 3. But Katyu's now wrapping around, setting up for the battery salts. Nice burrow strike by Whisper to get out of harm's way. And Gojira still holding on to one leap charge at all times as well. We'll make it away. The slows from the Mystic Snake allows Katyu to catch up. A couple more battery assault procs. We'll let Gojira live. Out of regen, though, right now in this bottom lane, Lacoste. Oh, and there's a big Mystic Snake. That'll pick up the kill under Gojira. <laughs> a very and nice the LGD spray. Jin Q. <laughs> it's so funny to oh. see that in the game. Like, <laughs> You love to see it. I always like when the teams put it a little bit more personality. Leo Style sitting in mid lane is... Uh, sorry, sitting mid lane was Katyu, uh, allowing Leo Style to recover the rune easily. And Gojira does die, but as we can now see on that camera, he's at least going to be able to refill the bottle of Sea Smile. Not a completely terrible death, as they were hoping to connect the LSA there. Denied. Still kind of operating on radio cast Lacoste, unfortunately, the Observer having a difficult time for now. Yeah, we Not just have to figure out what's, uh, what's going on. In the yeah, meantime, we're working on that. But top lane, they are setting up disruption here. Allows them to encircle and kill Kim with E. Stinger running. Did not get the last hit there, of course. And now with the call, Frank doing even more damage. The slow, pretty decent. Oh, One spin, spin. And Frank will get that kill. Level two spin. He's going to need a couple more now because Hector pops the level two metamorphosis. And He's about to have to his vanguard, so going to be very difficult to push out of the lane. Like later on, Shadow Demon does deal well with the Axe, uh, Soul Catcher, great. Uh, like they're, they're gonna have illusions against Medusa as well from Reflection, from potentially Shadow Demon. Autumn. Oh, Whisper, Whisper actually in for a bit of a rough time as the arrow is zoning Katyu away, but Katyu saw that one coming. Fight, fight, fight. Easily connects the battery assaults for the kill onto Whisper. He is starting to have a really tough time in this bottom lane, actually, on the Sand King. Not too unusual in the early levels, but this is a very powerful lane, the Sand King Marana. Is, is Clockwork 5 a bit stronger than we're giving it credit for? Or are Lava Seems like it. I think them? they're playing it really well. Also, the first blood that Kotaro got got him some extra damage. They put down the sentry as well on top Lane. of that. Smile, it's a hex level 1 as they look to close the gap. But even, well, actually, with no points in the Shadow Strike, they cannot allow Kim to catch back up and apply the shackles. Disruption mid lane, but no LSA to follow suit. As Leo Style will blink on forward. Sonic Wave catches Excellent them both. As C Smile in a bit of trouble now. Katyu looking to close the gap. Stunned by the LSA. They look to turn with the Laguna. C Smile picks up the kill there. Ether Shock sets up Leo Style for a kill. And Stinger, although he holds him down, well, kind of, because uh, it's Kim applying the shackles and getting the last hit there onto Stinger. Arrow from Gojira sailing through is going to be deftly avoided. That is going to be a big move here by Lava, who get a kill onto the enemy mid laner. Good, and secure good start the arcane. for Lava. Yep. Leo style blinks nicely. They don't even have vision on the high ground. They caught like a glimpse because they have Observer on the right side, but they didn't see where Lena was standing and it wow. actually connects. That was pretty big. Kim they completely... Likely... Oh, there we go. Our Observer's back, finally. We apologize about that. We should be good to go here. Apologies, everyone. Thanks for so. sticking through our little radio cast. It's all good. Yep. Um, Queen of Pain did a lot of maneuvers, uh, and the, that ulti that connected on both of them was really, really good. Clockwork. Position 5 Clockwork doing a lot of work. Like, he's ready to tank some damage, has infused Raindrop and the Windlace. Morana completely shut down. 
at the early stages. Like, she has no impact. And now sitting at the, what, slippers, raindrop, and a stick? Not a position you want to be in. No, and Stinger doesn't really want to be top either, as Frank already with a Vanguard has given the boot to the TB, allowing Kim to safely dive the Tier 1 tower. Paul just to continue the lockdown. Not too many spins, not a whole lot of attack speed here on Stinger. Uh, but with only one point here, actually, in the Battle Hunger, they are reliant on getting the spins or just a dunk. The first permanent armor Might stack is actually... Dunk. Hector trying to fight through this one does at least get off a good Sunder. Careful here though, the axe going a bit too far, eats the second Laguna Blade. That's a double kill then for Hector and a complete oh. turnaround of this top lane. Man, they overextended. Queen of Pain blinking in aggressively on top of meta. Yes, you do have an extra point in blink because you have no points in Shadow Strike. But it, and it was also the blink with Arcane. Maybe she thought, you know, I can get in and out without dying, but the damage was a, a bit too much. And now they fed. Two core kills plus a shaman. That that's how you handle them. Some kills and it's definitely gonna backfire, especially with this axe. You know, being uh, super farmed, having that vanguard being high level, they they get a bit too much out of it. They do have Medusa, who's free farming. Uh, Kataros having sure. a really good game. He's sitting on power treads, dragon lance. And the tumbler stone, extra mana, good way to like dodge an arrow, potentially a borrow strike. Yeah, but like you're saying, even in terms of net worth, where it was Frank even leading C Smile this early, that, that nice double kill top lane not only, of course, helps out Hector as he continues his farming war, but uh, also it helps C Smile, who can create a lot of space and needs to create a lot of space, dare I say, uh, for this TB to get the farm. Snakes into the Serpent Ward's top lane, or Shackles into the Serpent Ward's, rather. Esco GR running again, only level one battle hunger, not going to be enough damage here to secure the kill. But with the Serpent Wards placed down and no metamorphosis, they should get this kill. Or, sorry, uh, he get a plants tower. an observer ward. Down is Kim. Not really quite the best range of this hero, and Marana outspeeds him by just five move speed, but that's going to be simple enough. Ektor is actually going to come top to farm the Serpent Wards. Just need to be a little bit careful, though, just didn't have meta for 10 more seconds. Uh, and with Axe having pretty healthy dunk uh, range on this 250 at level 1, he's going to be able to take on the tower. Okay. So, Frank's still off to a pretty decent start. It's not going to be quite the game that we saw Mariano have earlier. Not a bad one by any means. No, still a good timing on a Blink Dagger. Has Phase Boots queued up. At this point, you just skip the phase. You get the blank dagger and then go back to phase. Gonna play top lane. Gets another kill onto Frank, however. That one a bit bigger. As they will catch him out of position, attempting to invade the jungle. He smiles third kill here already, having a pretty decent start on this Lena, honestly. Uh, seems like he's likely to build into the bots as well, first item. Yeah, makes sense. I want to see what the second item is going to be. Uh, BKB always feels like a safe choice. I'll hold that thought. Arrow. Yeah, it's a big one. Sonic Wave only catches the Lena, but there's finally level 6 for the support. 5 Clockwork. Stinger in a doing a good job and actually the cogs prevent anyone but leo style from actually chasing further they have vision on c smile pain wants with to blink the seven again. stacks of fiery Misses. soul they can't quite catch him missing the scream of pain here as stinger applies the demonic purge continuing to kite out caught who now has at least the cooldown but no mana for the battery assaults means that they won't be able to punish any further radiance bottom tower yep. they, they lose position four four position four so all good in the end to go about the Lena's itemization. Like BKB feels safe. You're playing into Clockwork, a Hookshot, Axe Call, Sonic Wave, and Stone Gaze. But like eventually you're gonna need to get a BKB. Maybe like a Shadow Blade is your second item. Not sure if you wanna like commit heavily to BKB early on because of what you're playing into. Say, and some Shackles on their fight. Caught you right back on a C Smile. Another Laguna Blade, another kill. Smile still alive as well, and Leo even forced back now by the damage of Whisper. Another Blink Dagger here, but no Burrow Strike for three more seconds. Is Hector even showing up now uh, to defend the Tier 1 tower? Denies it. Man, just see us in everything in sight. You can't stop yeah, him. Whatever's low HP, he's going to go for it. He's going to kill it. <laughs> Thank God they're not playing against the Venomancer. He might kill his own kid team. Smoke from Beast Coast. They didn't have enough no, damage ulties. because Verana is a little bit under-leveled, so Queen of Pain managed to blink out Kim. 
straight up gonna die. Is that a blind L No. I thought it was a blind LSA. There was a ward there. About half blind though. And actually now it seems like Kayu wants to join his friend, but a pick Sonic Wave! C Smile still alive, but they're gonna give two kills to Kotaro as he activates now at least the Stone Gaze. Still cannot finish off the Sanking. A bit too tanky. But that was quite the mystic snake there. A mythical snake even. As it picks up two kills and now Gojira attempting to TP away. No stuns here. So they are going to be allowed to leave, but they pay a heavy price, Beast Coast does, for that triangle incursion. Yeah, Sonic Wave. I think the previous Sonic Wave was used with the Arcane on, so that's why it was online once again. And uh, yeah, four points in Scream of Pain, Blink Sin, and you said the Mystic Snake on top of it. Uh, Sanking does have a Blink Dagger. We're yet to see the Epicenter. I love the build on Stinger this game. Like, he's playing five Shadow Demon and is not going for any greedy build, like... I need to max out Shadow Poison, me, me killer, me farm heroes. He's just maxing out the Soul Catcher. It's much, much better. Lowers the cooldown <laughs> and uh, yeah, the 30% of their current HP loss, level 3, 35. Uh, it's still very good. Yep. I think it's the right thing to do as well if you're playing a position 5, right? You're you're not farmer. You're not killer. You, you are here. You're support. You live to cast 6 ultis and then 2 charges of disruption at the end of the game uh, if we get there. Maybe, yeah, eventually. Yeah, that's just a highlight there. Big Sonic Wave Scream of Pain really turning that fight. And the Snake onto two, almost catching the Marana as well. She just leaps to do the fights. Uh, so really nice job there. That's why it's important as a support to stand there and break them smokes. Uh, really surprised that they saw that one coming, to be honest, because Beast Coast, again, smoked up without any ultis, uh, just kind of trying to utilize that ward they had uh, in the Radiance Triangle. Axe with a Blink Dagger, they can get easier pickoffs now. They have someone to play with the Clockwork to be able to close the gap. Hook shot in between two heroes. Not sure how that one missed, but it did. This call is for Roche. Uh, some of these Serpents aren't attacking Roche, though. That's a lot of damage missing. Uh, three because of these things do 1.5 times damage to Roche. You're right, just three. Not too bad. As he is going to leave the pit. Again, you can only attack Roche if you're in the pit, though. And that applies for the Serpents as well. Another arrow here is going to stun Roche. That's more damage out from the Serpent Wards for free. East Coast well aware that Roche is going on, and they've got a healthy amount of team fight as well. Rocket they still are plus conserving the uh, epicenter. Cutting things out, they want the big epi. Here it comes. Otto found him, and the Barrow Strike onto two. Sonic Wave doesn't quite catch anyone here. Leo's out, able to blink away in time. Only three stacks of level one Shadow Poison, but Stinger getting the kill with the Demonic Purge. Has turned to stone his Whisper. Doesn't get dunked, Ooh, though. So misses. Frank not collecting the kill. Only Kotaro so far striking first here for Lava onto the position five Disruptor. In trouble now as Kim makes another jump, but he does secure the kill at the very least onto the Sand King. Closes the gap there very nicely, and Kat, you're doing a decent job at least low. holding everyone out. Roche is very low. These Serpent Wars doing a lot of work. Frank is going to spin off of the uh, mirror image that Ectris created off of him, but Ectris got business in the Roche pit as Kat, you at least creating a little bit more space, is going to perish to the right clicks of C Smile. As Frank with a big blink call in onto two. Can he snag this Roche? No. Stunned by the arrow uh, of Gojira. And Aegis on the deck. No. PK1's picked it up much too quickly. He's trying to get out of this fight as C Smile out. has to abandon ship. Simply TP's away. Ector was just holding on to the Sunder. Gonna use that now on the Dusa and Beast Coast. I mean, they, hard they to need get that to go so better for them. Little. Like they need to dunk the sinking and uh, get that extra movement speed. Try to chase them down. Oh, you know, Pain getting caught this time around. She's not getting yeah. away. No, nope, not this time. And Queen of Pain feels really underwhelming in, in, in the new patch. I I feel like people. Like, th what hurts her the most is the Null Talisman having that extra spell damage is now gone. Uh, that she would definitely prefer that over the mana cost reduction. Like, some changes to Scream of Pain mana cost. Also, damage on the Sonic Wave. High Assange damage lowered. All the items, like, all these things add up. Oh, Shaman Wait. Ulti. Him? Okay, he, act, he awkwardly walked into C Smile, but this might actually turn into a kill because he's faster on the Hex and C Smile. LSA is good, but he's still going to end up dropping here to the damage of Kotaro. C Smile traded away Frank, but the Power Cogs, they're blocking in Hector. 
Finally, they're going to time out, but the Serpent Wards, well, they don't do that he's much damage. Farming. He's got 24 armor. Yeah, he's got 24 armor. He's okay. And now the counter initiation from Whisper Kim with another sheep. Oh, in the mid lane, almost gets at least Ector with the Ether War or the Ether Shock, but not nearly enough damage. I can't believe Ector lives through all that. Hector is getting out of control. He has the Stinger. Aegis, has a full Scotty, his itemization first item. SNY makes a lot of sense. Wants to have that status resistance against Axe and Shadow Shaman. Especially Carries. Carries do love to get the status resistance when playing into Axe. So, like, they just. Because even if you have a BKB, still gonna go through. So, you need some kind of a defense through it. Uh, and, uh, yeah, the Lava's lineup, uh, the way they've been executing, I, I don't think they can allow to fall back behind too much. Because Axe, he had a really good time in the lane. Uh, same goes for Medusa. Medusa's still doing okay. It's zero deaths on Kataro, but Queen of Pain is the big problem. Like she's uh, she's fallen off very quickly. She needs uh, somehow to make come back into the game. This is a big kill if they can get it. Yep, Sunder used as Quap, still in a lot of trouble, and well, simply just killed. It's not too complicated, Kim. As well, it's uh, very easy pickings. The Stinger sets up for him using the level one disruption. He actually maxing Shadow Poison next. He has maxed Shadow Poison next. We've seen in the previous He's... fights what the, like, Axe did. He goes in, uh, he gets Demonic Purge and just straight up dies. Uh, Beast goes right now all over the place. This is going to be a free tier 1 tower. They're going to put the, the, they're going to kill the bottom tower as well. Take out the outpost. Really clean stuff. With Otto trying to farm up, Eye of Scotty, is that going to be big enough of a turning point versus the TB for, for this to make a little bit of a difference, or...? Uh, hard to say. Probably no, but uh, we gotta keep the viewers entertained and in the chat, so we're gonna say yes. <laughs> Absolutely. We're gonna lie a bit. Yes. I mean, they they're still have, like, uh, good ways of uh, coming back into the fight. If they group up the call, the Sonic way, we've seen the damage. Uh, just Beast Coast, they need to make more mistakes right now. There's the oh, call that oh. misses. Throw strike, LSA, but Caillou, he's gonna actually end up catching the Scorpion, and now he finds the Laguna Blade in his face. He smiles, BKB, he doesn't care about the battery assault. Will be forced back as the Stone Gaze is pretty good at separating the team fight, but Whisper continuing to fight, and the ba mana burned here from Kotaro doesn't even have enough for another Mystic Snake. They might look for more as Stinger leads the charge, holding on to his four staff though. Frank watching over his do so. They will not be able to go for more. They will be able to get the D ward. Two supports dead basically for free as Beast Coast and even lose Aegis, of course, because Hector's on the other side of the map continuing to farm. Yeah, pretty much this fight was four versus five. They do get the two support kills, uh, leave without casualties. And as you said, Terrorblade uh, continues to farm up. Still 40 seconds left on Aegis. This is going to be a tower for them. No, they're not getting anything out of the Sonic Waves anymore. Like, the damage was good. Uh, when I say Sonic Wave, it was a good pushback. It was a good uh, connecting on three heroes. It's just, like, there's not enough follow-up. Axe missed the call initiation saying can use the Borrow Strike immediately. So they didn't get any kills. I, I want to see Queen of Pain, like, farm up her. Kaya and San, she needs a shard, she needs a BKB on top of that. She feels like she needs uh, way too many items. Uh, seems like they yeah. still want to go for the high ground. Hector, uh, region is up. And, you know, uh, normally for, for most teams, they, they decide to use first ages for tier twos, and as soon as it expires, they go, oh, perfect, let's get back. Hector, his ages expires, and he decides to use meta and continuing uh, just to hit this tier three tower. Uh, is there anything big? The Scotty is not done, actually, and they killed the Deuce's Courier, so she won't be able to get this too easily. Perhaps that's what's giving Beast Coast the confidence here. But just in general, like, about what you're saying, you just... Beast Coast is not the kind of team where you get to make mistakes and, and get away with the game, you know? Like, once once you kind of miss your opening or you, you miss your window and make one or two mistakes, they, they kind of just start to play some clean Dota. They know where Until Medusa they decide is. Not to. They do. Scotty... Not quite finished for Medusa. She's on the shopping Yules. trip. Stone Gaze misses. There's a Yules, but he was turned to stone and couldn't quite find her. Lena as well, not throwing the blind LSA. It's Medusa living by the skin of her teeth. Does she have teeth? Sure, skin of her teeth. Yeah, she has teeth. Yeah, an ugly one, uh, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, she does. I just looked this way. <laughs> 
We're, you know, we're, we focus on the important things. Scotty timings, eh. And thief. Very yeah. important. <laughs> Scotty timing done. Incoming. They're going to take the outpost again. So they can TP. Buy back TP. Closer to the fight. Radiant are scanning. Man, Frank, yeah. he it feels like the same story, game two and game three. He's uh, He's been doing okay, and then he just starts to fall off. Same goes as Legion. Commander had a lot of damage that he got from the duels. This time around, there's not much from the Calling Blade, but uh, still in a very tough spot trying to farm his BKB. Also, like their two supports don't deal well with the Illusions split pushing. Shaman can kill it with the Hex, but if there are two Illusions, then he does struggle. Yeah, I'd be curious to see what the, what the panel, especially like Lelis has to say about that, right? Uh, as an off laner about, like what's, something's not connecting here, right? Because if, if the mid laner is having a decent start, right? Not an excellent start, because it was like Selena, but a, an okay, acceptable start. And the off laner is also having an acceptable start. W where's the disconnect? Like where where do things end up going wrong? Because I completely agree. That's that's what we've seen this game and the last. Uh, same goes for mid lane. Uh, just uh, rotation wise, they, they needed a bit of extra damage. I feel like this um, like shaman pick didn't get them much. Yeah, he's he's a great hero. Don't get me wrong. Uh, has uh, Philly Stone, has Lens and Shard, so like he might eventually pop off, but uh, in those early engagements and rotations, he's one of the slowest heroes to move, and if you kill him, then he's just not getting value right now. He's what, 2, 9, and 6? Yeah, not doing amazing. Uh, again, like like Lella said, it's a hero you can kind of own the game on or just kind of feed it right now. He looks to be owning as Hector is going to be shackled up completely and the Dusa as well preventing any saves. But no, the Stone Gaze didn't turn Stinger to stone and Hector with the BKB is going to remove the life of Leo Style of finishing him off swiftly. Frank trying to escape as it's an epicenter focusing down onto Kutaro that's already three dead. Kutaro standing his ground to fight but without the Stone Gaze he is going to fall very quickly. And all that's left, I mean, it's a full team wipe, really, as the Clockwork dies on the enemy side of the map and just respawns. Only the Deusa dies for Beast Coast. Oh, man. Save so close, Stinger. but so far. So he can get the BKB off and get the Sunder and Queen of Pain, the turnaround point, the Scotty slow, plus a Reflection slow, and Demonic Purge. The heroes are not moving. Whoever gets caught by this, uh, they're straight up dead when standing near the TV. That, that honestly just might be game Lacoste. I... I Roche is up. Beast Ghosts are going to head right into the pit. Lava, they, they don't have Sonic Wave. They don't have Stone Gaze. They don't even have Dunk. It's on cooldown still for another minute. Uh, two lanes of Barracks already gone. Beast Ghosts can get Megas. It's possible because they have all the Tier 2s already. I think they're going to settle for two lanes of Barracks and then look to play it safe. So back goes Ector. Confident his Illusions will finish the job there in the top lane. It's looking like another clean game for Beast Ghost here. No, mis no mistakes, no diving. Do not want to overextend. Roshan is up. Shard plus plus Aegis. Uh, they need to contest this. They can't allow them to get Rosh. Incoming. And smoke it is. They're drawing on a minimap. How to approach this one. Go for the high ground. Try to backstab. Creeps are coming in from the top lane, so they will know Lava is smoked. Where will Beast Coast position themselves is the question. 30 seconds left until uh, you have uh, the Metamorphosis at the ready. You know, Dusa was somewhere mid, thanks to the Mantle Illusions. It's, it's plainly, uh, painfully obvious now uh, that they are still smoked. TP going to TP to the bottom lane. As the smoke now expires. Arrow is going to scout at least a ward. The TB Illusion is going to probably scout the rest of it. I know it's not real, obviously, but Mol Hex it nonetheless. 350 gold for him. Look at C-Small on bottom lane. He's going for the split push. He's like, oh, you want to contest Roche? Well, someone needs to address this because there's a catapult, and now he's waiting for them to show. They're inside the pit. 
They're just going to try and do Roach. She's smiling, of course, with bots. So we can always just TP back in. And Beast Coast, they're, they're just everywhere. Serpent Wards are down. It's a level 2 Serpent Ward, so they finish this thing rather quickly. You know, this is not traditionally the fastest Roche lineup, but Whisper ready to go inside into the pit. The call, though, to counter initiate Aegis. Picked up, snatched by Quotado, because it's Beast Coast who get the kill. And still the X shard on deck. Quotado's going to turn around and pick it up as they have at least gotten through Stinger, but Lava falling like flies one by one. Quotado's going to just TP away. Nails out of this fight, which leaves Leo Style behind. As he does at least get the Sonic Boob Silence onto Whisper, oh, but the Sonder. Sonder. Oh, no chance. Actor not giving them even a glimpse back into this game. It looked like it might be an okay fight. You know, they set up the boards inside Roche Pit. Uh, Kotaro picks up the Aegis, picks up the Shard, drops the Dragon Lance into the backpack, uh, uses the Cold Blooded immediately, but it's still not enough. The, the damage output is just not there. Now, full AC on Terror Blade on top of that. Scotty, uh, look at the slow, the split shot as well. It's, uh, it's a difficult carry to carry matchup, I would say. Uh... Two times in a row. Uh, he, he's got Aegis Lacoste. It's perhaps not impossible, but very slim. Uh, what does Dota Plus give him? You want to you wanna have a have a guess at what Dota Plus gives him right now? Ooh, having Medusa on the team, I'd say 3%. Okay, a, a noble guess. Uh, you're off, though. It's, it's 0%. Dota Plus says that uh, Beast Coast have this one in the bag. All right, pack What's it about? up, boys. And back to the panel. <laughs> See what Avo Plus has to say about Beast Coast. I'm sure it's only positive things, as always. <laughs> For now, though, Beast Coast certainly playing a very clean game. Whisper even with a full Octarine core. I mean, it, it's it's hard for Lava at this stage to get back in the game. It's. It's, it would seem possible, but the Stinger, I mean, uh, Lelis talked about during the panel how, how bad it feels to play Axe into the Stinger. I didn't even think about something like a Clockwork or a Quap when you can have so much of your damage just kind of removed. Uh, thanks to Disruption, the save is, is seeming to, to prove the difference, at least yeah, early. The, the saves has. have been on point this game. Kim, going ham on those illusions. There he is. DD ruin though for C Smile as he is now reapproaching this fight. Did go, we didn't talk too much about C Smile other than his earlier fights, which were mostly with his spells. But now he's amped up his physical damage by a bit. Uh, well, of course, he's going to let Fiery Soul lapse because, you know, why not? Oh, but they get Frank out. Oh, he makes the jump out of the high ground. He is just eviscerated. He's just dead. He couldn't even counter Helix thanks to the Silver Edge break. C Smile rebuilding the Fiery Soul stacks as he tears apart Kim next. Hector just focusing onto the objectives of the buybacks here. Uh, as actually Beast Coast can play this one a bit more patient. Frank this time on the call finds two. C Smile though with the blink aggressively up onto the high ground and uses Laguna Blade to secure the kill on the Leo style. Frank's dead a second time. Quotado gets the kill at least onto C Smile as Turn to Stone is Hector. Quotado still Thunder. no actually without Aegis is in a lot of trouble. Out of mana. C Smile back in the fight. We'll shred him a second time. And Whisper is ready for desserts. They're gonna pop this clockwork. And it looks like with only Quotado left, it's only a matter of time for Beast Coast claim the 2-0. Uh, just the no no damage like they they pop everything there is save everyone is relatively tanky uh, they can burst uh, k1 hector 16 0 and 10 didn't die a single time on his terror blade just uh, amazing performance knows when to join the fights knows when to farm uh, great decision making not just by him but the rest of the team as well they did shut down queen of pain and they did shut down x which are two playmaking heroes of lava so it was very difficult for them to play the game because Medusa, like she wants to farm. She doesn't want to be in those fights early on. Maybe if there's a fight around her, yeah, she'll take the fight, pop the stone gaze. But uh, yeah, the rest of the team, uh, how many calls have we seen from Axe? One, right? One dunk, that's all. Yeah, just the one Axe dunk. Yeah, tough, tough for Frank to really get the ball rolling there. It just didn't really seem like he had anyone to play with in that early game, which is not how I thought this game was going to go. <clears throat> Pardon me, the position five clockwork perhaps having something to do with that. But uh, yeah, the rest of Lava try and create enough space for Quotado to get the farm in, and it just just can't come fast enough. East Coast uh, are going to take the clean 2 0 victory, uh, which is going to conclude our day for Dota already. Uh, of course, definitely advise you guys to stick around because when our panel is prepared and ready, uh, 
as Abo attempts to uh, coordinate an interview. Uh, definitely worth sticking around with. Uh, Abo and the Beast Coast guys have quite the rapport, so it's always really, really cool to uh, get the interview there because you really get to hear their thoughts a little bit more personally uh, compared to perhaps you would to any other team. And it's especially a cool insight considering it's essay. And, uh, well, these guys, Peace Coast, only speak Spanish, so I uh, would definitely stick around, of course, as well to hear Duster and Lolo's break down the game a bit more. But I do believe they are ready. Lacoste, do you have any other uh, closing comments? Because uh, we're all done for the day already. Uh, good Dota overall. A bit uh, impressed, uh, again, by Infinity, the way they played. You know, first game was a disaster, uh, but uh, love to see them do well. And uh, th there's a lot of raw talent in South America. Just need to polish it a little bit, and the beast goes standardly good. Like when when the ma when it matters, it it just you know it's it's their day. They always find a way how to get the top spot in SA. Yep, absolutely. They always find a way. Infinity 2-1 and Beast Coast 2-0. That's it for Lacoste and I. Over to Avo Plus, Duster, and Lelis to break down our day for you guys. Thank you, Richie. That man covered so much. I think we actually get an interview this time. <laughs> it's all thanks to Seek and Strike, guys. All right. We just witnessed uh, a fantastic game by Beast Coast there. Uh, but I think I want to harp on Lala first a little bit because Lala, you, you touched on the quad pick in the beginning. You said it looks a little bit desperate. It looks like they don't have like a clear plan here. Did you find their playstyle also showed that a little bit or was the playstyle just a, a result of the draft? I think it was just a result of the draft. I think the draft is just hard for them. They have like these okay. losing lanes, which they just have to, I don't know, they have to make these plays with a like, five clock. It just, it just looks really hard. Have you ever been in a, in a actually, I'm going to start with you, Duster. Have you been in a team uh, where this position happens and like you, you lose the first game, you did, did a bad draft, and the second game you're a little bit lost, you didn't know what to start with? Have you been in that position, Duster? And you just look uh... back, and you're like, oh, we could have done this better. Uh, yeah, sometimes you prepare things that like doesn't work, but yeah, you got a you got a feeling that you should stick to it because it's what you prepared, and mm -hmm. then it doesn't work again. So what can you do? Like uh, second game, they could have risked it more, I, I believe, but mm -hmm. I guess it's what they prepared. They had the shadow shaman in mind, sh shaman cop opening in mind, and they felt like trying. So yeah. Uh, it, it didn't really work out. What do you what do you think of the axe pick, by the way, towards the end? Of this? I think you got your justification in this game. I, I just think the hero is really hard to make it work. Like you just have to not play against saves, and you need damage on your team, and you need wave push from other heroes. I, I I honestly don't really like the combination when your four doesn't help you get kills, especially when axe and shaman they're both like control heroes. So I feel like they mm. just don't really synergize together that well. And even in lane, I, I don't think like. I think Axe is kind of carrying the Shaman in the lane, but even so, I don't think Shaman's happy if Axe wants to cut the wave, right? Shaman's kind of a hero that he wants the XP. So I feel like they just don't really synergize together. I don't I don't understand exact. I know it was a last pick, so maybe he was just comfortable with the Axe, but it just looks like a really hard Axe game, especially against... I feel like Axe against Terrorblade is also just way too way too hard. Like, he has a Sunder spell. He's, he's very rarely going to get low in a call where he's just going to die 100-0. And and you think that in in this game it wasn't really up to Frank's performance. Like no matter how confident he's on the axe, it just seemed like like do you feel this the same uh, idea with Papita's draft last time? Like he there was more plays aid for Papita in last game when we saw with Infinity that there was here for Frank. Yeah, I mean it also depends on like the caliber of the teams. Sometimes you can just pick axe, sure. and you, just, you can just own, and then if you look at it like the other team was just a lot worse, right? So these openings just happen. <laughs> But I do think Infinity set it up better because they had a Tusk, which was happy roaming and ruining another lane, right? And in this game, Shaman's not happy running around. He kind of wants to be stationary in the lane, soak some XP, then he can roam a little bit. But ideally, mm. the hero just wants XP. It's not like a roamer. So I, I feel like he just doesn't really fit with the Axe pick. Fair enough. Let's look at the other side, though. Uh, the Beast Coast playstyle. I think this game, both games were actually Beast Coast in serious mode, as we like to call it in South America, El Modo Serio. Uh, Duster, what are some of the things that you enjoyed here in, in general in the series for Beast Coast? Some things you'd like to highlight for maybe audiences that haven't seen them yet. Undefeated in this league with this hero. It yeah. is broken. Uh, I really want South America to pick it more. Uh, mm -hmm. And they're all the time they're first picking this hero, they understand the value of it. And you see, like, how OP it is to have a save. Like, the last team fight on mid, they were about to burst TB, but then you disrupt, uh, you can have the Sunder, and then it's a completely different fight. Like, saves are OP, and I love their Shadow Demon. 
Ah, I'm glad. Uh, Duster, if you guys have not followed any of the panels, he has had a storyline of just advocating for Shadow Demon stronger every single panel, and I'm glad, because I agree with you. Tell us, Duster, about the Shard as well. How strong is the Shard of Shadow Demon? I mean, the, the hero has continuously, so uh, it's the most OP hero, OP thing, because it's like a mini BKB. Like, you can't slow down your carry, they can't use your carry, they can't do anything. Like, he's just gonna kill everyone. It's amazing. <laughs> you think is, is Shadow Demon a good a good hero to play in your pubs for those people that are, want to play some more casual Dota? Is he a good hero to carry the team with from the five position? I hate playing <laughs> Shadow Demon. I'm gonna cast Purge on my hard carry and he's gonna be diving and doing crazy shit. I, I don't like Shadow Demon in my pubs, but when you synergize well with your team, it, it's amazing. Like all the potentials it has. <laughs> lovely. And Lelis, uh did I, I know this final axe pick didn't do much, but did the Lapita pick? Sway you a little bit on the axe? Are you a little bit more sold on the axe situation lead? Yeah, I think I think it has value if you want to let your four run around. I think I think, mm -hmm. I think it's nice. If they can't stop you from recurring the wave, then I think the enemy feels kind of sad. I, I can mm -hmm. see it. I I do want to ask as well. Have you ever been in the position as an offlaner where like there? Because we talked about the darkster right in the draft, or like this is a great darkster game, and and Frank probably wasn't in his hero pool, isn't so confident. Have you ever been in a position where that's been you? Like, you know there's a hero that's like right, or someone calls a hero that's right, and you you are not so experienced with it? How does that feel? For sure. Uh, I, I think usually when that sort of thing happens, it means that you're just not ready enough to play. I mean, you just have to learn how to play the hero, right? Like, you just don't know how to play it. You either learn how to play it, or you talk to your team like, we're never going to pick this hero ever. But then you're limiting yourself, right? That's not ideal. Right. It, especially like Darkseer is such a strong hero. Like for team fighting mm -hmm. and stuff. Uh, ideally, you don't want to be in that situation. It can happen sometimes. You know, nobody's perfect. Nobody plays every hero in the game. Of course. But uh, you want to minimize it as much as you can, for sure. So then, like after that, you're probably just gonna play a bunch of pubs, learn the hero, watch the replays, play it in some scrims, then be ready to play it in official. Is it okay if I asked you to share if there was like any specific hero that it happened to you with, if you remember, or do you remember any? I don't really remember a specific instance, honestly. Uh, okay. Maybe recently, like uh, this Pangolier hero, I used to play it a lot, mm -hmm. uh, and then I just stopped playing it. I felt like the hero just fell off. It's really weak in lane, and then I think against Medusa, the hero's really good. Right. Uh, I think the the ult is really good. The defusal is really good, but I just don't really play it. Right? I don't really practice it. I don't think it's a hero that you can just pick up and play it, like a centaur. Right? It's a lot more simpler. I think Pangolier, you have to know how to hit the spells. It's a little bit harder. You know how to maneuver the ult. So these sort of things, I wouldn't feel comfortable playing it. I think recently, I don't remember when, probably on Quincy, there was like this situation happened, probably. Okay, uh, that's that's very cool insight, honestly. It's nice to get into the head of the players. And that's why we have two pro players on this panel, uh, both uh, semi-active active recently uh, of some kinds, but they're not panelists yet, don't worry. They're, they're still high mm -hmm. MMR, they're still smart. Uh, they don't make mistakes. And who does make mistakes, though, are pro players when they come into interviews, and we're going to have to fix that. So if you guys give us like three, four minutes, we're going to coordinate with Hector, who's waiting for us an interview, and try to get him into this panel. So we're going to take a small break, and we'll come back with an interview with Beast Coast Carry. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> 